What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, and on today's episode, I am so excited to share this one with you. It's how to swim with the proper hand position and the science behind why it's actually faster and more efficient to swim with your fingers slightly separated as compared to having them closed or all spread out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. In this video, I'm gonna walk through a little bit of the physics and swimming science behind why that's true. And by the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you some practical tips of how you can actually apply this to improve the amount of force that you can produce with your pull by up to 10%. So if you're looking to swim faster and smarter than ever before, you've come to the right place. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ferris Sabetti. I'm the co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And on this channel and in our company, we help people all over the world improve their performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you're looking to take your swimming to the next level, whether you're a beginner or a more advanced elite swimmer, you've come to the right place. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what you think if you should be swimming with your hands cupped or they should be a little bit spread out. Now, before we get into the details of the physics, we first need to overview how you get faster in swimming. That is the age old question. So I'm gonna briefly overview that. Remember the water is 800 times more resistive than air. We all know it, swimming makes you super tired. It's a great overall workout. There's really only two ways to get faster. The first way is actually the easiest to get started. It's decreasing resistance. This is where we're focused on our body position, swimming with our eyes looking down, lifting up our legs. We wanna decrease the amount of overall drag that our body creates moving through the water. I did an awesome whiteboard session, how to swim with perfect freestyle. I'll link that in the description below. Make sure you check it out if you're looking to take your swimming to that more efficient level. And the second way you get faster, and this is what we're gonna focus on in this video, is how you increase propulsion. That's right, how do you actually pull more water? You don't have to just hit the gym and get stronger. There are actually ways you can do that with your technique to not only reduce the amount of resistance you have, but to increase that propulsion. So now that we have a good overview of how you actually get faster, those are the two ways, we're gonna focus in on propulsion. And before also the physics we get into it, remember early vertical forearm, this is EVF, and this is actually how we pull the water. So this extends from our fingertips all the way to our elbow, and you wanna think about that as being one big paddle. So you don't just swim with your hands, you actually grab the water with your entire arm, specifically from your fingertips all the way to your elbow. Now how do you maximize the part of that that has the highest amount of surface area, which is actually your hand. Now obviously overall your whole arm is a lot bigger than just your hand, but if we focus on specifically your hand and your fingertips, that's what sets up the stroke and the rest of the pull. So you wanna think of your hand and your arm as a paddle. And if we focus in on just the hand, that's how we're gonna to get to these illustrations, the physics, and how we actually apply this, why it's faster with your fingers open. But the physics background of why this is actually true and why it's faster with your fingertips slightly spread apart, it comes down to three rules, three principles. Are we ready? Here we go, number one. As an object moves through the water, the layer of water next to the object moves as well. So that means as you're pulling, if your fingers are open, as your hand is moving through the water, the, the, the water that's surrounding the walls of your finger on the outside of your finger is actually moving as well. And if you take a step back and you look at a ship, a big freighter, a cruise liner moving through the water, obviously the ship is moving at maybe 20 knots the water next to the ship is also moving. And you can see this in open water swimming, drafting, you even see it in air in the Peloton in a bike. So the surrounding area is actually affected by the object moving. And remember water is 800 times more dense than air. So stay with me. So step number two, this sticky layer, so the area surrounding the object, the, the water surrounding your fingertips, this sticky layer of water increases the surface area of that object. So obviously your hand's not getting any bigger, but the surface area of which to increase the drag to actually pull the water, because that sticky layer is actually increasing the size of your finger technically, uh, it's actually increasing the surface area of the overall object, up to a point. Obviously, if you swim with your fingers massively apart, you're still gonna have a gap between them and that's gonna be less efficient. And thirdly, the force of the water will flatten the skin, meaning it's gonna be basically one big layer and that's gonna create a web effect. If you think about a duck or a frog or something that has web, people say webbed feet, right? So that they actually have skin between their, their digits. And so as a human, you don't really have skin between there, but if you have the right amount of distance between your fingers, you're actually gonna create a similar effect. Now think about this from if you're eating soup, right? You don't eat soup with a fork, you eat with a spoon. It's a very similar concept 
uh, theoretically, both, both in also practicality. So a study from the Journal of Theoretical Biology, they did computational fluid dynamic simulations, and they showed that if you have the right distance between your fingers, you can actually increase force by up to 10%. And in the American Physical Society Division of Fluid Dynamics, this increase in force by 10% can actually give you a 2.5% improvement in speed. That's right, 2.5% in speed. I have a quick little diagram of how ridiculous that is when it comes to actually how fast you can swim. So if you take someone who goes a 25 second, 50 meter freestyle, and you just multiply that by 0.975, that's you know by 2.5% improvement, you're gonna be 24.375. That's over half a second faster by having this principle of increasing the amount of force by 10%, thus making your time up to 2.5%. Now, obviously, the best swimmers in the world are already doing this. So a Michael Phelps or a Katie Ledecky, if you watch these elite athletes in slow motion or underwater, you can actually see their hands, their fingers are not solid glued to each other. They're a little bit more relaxed or they look relaxed. And the swimmer is actually moving and pulling through the water with their fingers slightly separated. It's a little bit different for each person, but the distance that you're shooting for is about five to 10 millimeters, right? And you don't have to go and measure it with like a ruler and you know, you have to be five to 10 millimeters. It really depends on your size, your strength level, your feel of the water, but it's about five to 10 millimeters. And from a degree standpoint, it's actually about 10 degrees. If you guys appreciate how I did my three illustrations, give this video a like, I really appreciate it. But we have three exhibits here. We have exhibit A, B, and C. And I guess before listening up to what I just said, you might think, you know what? B is probably the fastest swimmer. It's gonna pull the most water because option A and option C, there's too big of a gap between the fingers. The water is gonna slip right through. You're not gonna have as strong of a feel of the water. Now, if you were to swim with a paddle and you were able to actually put a web, then option C would actually be the fastest because you are preventing any water from getting through. The reality is you can't swim with paddles and you don't have webbed, webbed feet and webbed hands. So option A is actually the most efficient. And now hopefully with a little bit more explanation, it makes a little bit more sense. If you wanna get more into the science of how this actually applies, here's a little fancy formula. We'll link documentation down below if you guys are interested, but talking about this computational fluid dynamics without getting too much into the weeds. If you're a swim nerd, try and keep up here. So we've got this diagram, again, A, B, and C. So A, if we were to take you know, the fingers and just chop off the fingers and look at it from a cross-sectional perspective, Option A, obviously you can see there's a little bit of a gap between the fingers. Option B, right here, there's no gap between the fingers. And option C, there's a massive gap. And the total distance here is our Y. Now the frontal area, and the goal is to increase this, is the multiplication of C times Y times L. Here P is fluid density, L is cylinder length. And then we're gonna take half of that multiplied by V squared, which is the fluids. And ultimately, through all that math, Option A is the fastest because it increases the frontal area the most. Again, if you wanna check out the, the nerdy math and science, check it out linked in the description below. So how do you actually apply this to training? You're wondering to yourself, this is great. So how do I actually train this? And it doesn't really matter if you're just a beginner swimmer and you're getting into it, you're learning how to swim at the age of seven, 12, 35, 55, or you're an elite swimmer, same concept applies. Remember, Michael Phelps and Katie Ledecky, the fastest swimmers in the world, all swim with a little bit of spread, a little bit more relaxed hand. So I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor of this video, Aqua Knuckles, because this is a fantastic product that was developed specifically for this purpose right here, improving the frontal area and increasing the amount of force that you can generate. So the Aqua Knuckles are actually a product that you put on your hand in the pool and they come in pairs, just like shoes. You got two hands, you get two pairs and they're actually color coded. They have different sizes. There's a sizing guide. I actually did a full workout with these on my fingers and they go between your middle finger and your index finger. And by putting them on, it actually positions, I'll go ahead and put one of these on my hands right now. It actually positions your hand and your fingers in the proper distance apart. So that way you can train just how it feels like if you're not doing this naturally. And most swimmers, they're, they're doing this maybe a little bit if they're already pretty competitive and they've been doing this for years, but they can always learn to do this even better. And who doesn't want another training tool in their goodie bag to take their swimming to the next level? So there we go. I just put on the Aqua Knuckles and as you can see, it's already putting a little bit of a gap between my fingers, just what I need. And then when you train, you can train all the strokes, breaststroke, butterfly, backstroke, freestyle of course, you can even do sculling. And when you train, 
uh, you know, a couple times a week with these and you do sets specifically focusing on this training element, you can actually teach your body and rewire the neuromuscular system to actually apply this concept and make that neural connection through your fingertips as you grab the water. So that way you can have the highest amount of force production so that you can get your potential at swimming up to two and a half percent faster by grabbing more water. Of course, there's an all natural way you can do fist drill and then you can go from fist drill where you swim in a fist to opening up your hands. Your hands are gonna feel really, really big and you're gonna feel that if you have that finger spacing. But the aqua knuckles are a great tool because it's really difficult to actually just intuitively just say, you know what, I'm gonna open my hands. Because as you fatigue and as you're moving your hand through the water, remember the water is 800 times more resistive than air. So most likely you're not gonna be able to do this without a tool and the proper tool is the aqua knuckles. Another piece of equipment that you can use in addition to the aqua knuckles are a pair of paddles. Now paddles are great because as you mentioned, uh, as I mentioned in, in exhibit C here, where the fingers are super spread out, you can actually put a paddle behind that and you can generate a lot of force. The problem is, like I said, in a competition or in any other scenario, you're not gonna be wearing paddles. So if you're really trying to get the most out of this, the aqua knuckles are the best way because this is something that is so realistic to how you actually feel when you swim, but it's giving you that separation. And as you can see, the product itself is not very big and they have different sizes, they're color coded, that's why they're in a few different colors. And this allows you to get the right fit, very easy to use, and make sure you check out the workout I did that I overview how these products work. I also did an unboxing and for all of our subscribers to this YouTube channel, if you guys are watching this video, thank you so much. There is a promo code linked in the description for 15% off. Go ahead and check them out. We really hope you enjoyed this video and how you can swim with your fingers a little bit open to improve your performance and health. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Make sure you check out the link for Aqua Knuckles. Great product, great company. I'll see you guys next time. Happy swimming.